This is Jeff Eichner of Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, United States of America. Listen to the International Radio Report every Sunday morning at 1030 on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Welcome, everybody, to the International Radio Report for Sunday, August the 20th, 2023, here on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. My name is Sheldon. I am here with Jill. We thank you for tuning in to us again this week. We have uh, a lot of information of things going on in the world of radio for you today. And uh, we'll get to that in just a, a moment. First off, our usual information on how to contact us, radioreport at yahoo.com is our email address. We're live streaming and archived at ckut.ca, the website of uh, CKUT Radio in the city of Montreal. Our Facebook group is International Radio Report. We have 933 members, and we're welcoming a new member this week, all the way from a town named Burrell in Albania. We say hello and welcome to Edmund, all the way from Albania. And our YouTube channel, International Radio Report as well, and you can subscribe there and listen to our show whenever you like. And there are 861 subscribers. So uh, do check those out. Lots of good information, particularly on the Facebook page. But we should mention to start off today something about our Facebook page. You may have seen the postings that I put up that we're having difficulty with the new regulations here in Canada with respect to what Meta is doing with Facebook, and we are having difficulty posting links to some of the stories that we're talking about on the show. Jill, why is this happening? So uh, because of the new regulations in Canada that actually they want the uh, Meta to pay for news outlets uh, Meta is not happy, so they're blocking everything news and beyond, because a lot of what we try to post is not even news, uh, technically, and it's still blocked. So we are figuring out a way to bypass this. A um, couple of ideas came up, posting links in the YouTube channel comments, not comments, but the, the description below the video. And uh, we might soon have a Twitter account that will have the links that you can actually subscribe and follow. The problem arose last week if you went to look for some of the stories that we covered and you saw that they weren't posted on the Facebook page as usual. The most bizarre one was that I could not post the list of upcoming ham radio contests. How and what in the system determined that that was sharing news is beyond us. So we apologize for some of the stuff that you're used to seeing on Facebook not being there. And as Jill said, we're going to try to come up with uh, some ways around this. We've Some of the stories they did accept, others they didn't. So uh, we'll let you know in the weeks ahead. So uh, thank you for your understanding on that. It's been frustrating. I'm sure many of oh, you yeah. have had the same frustration going on in uh, groups or channels that you're involved with. So on with the stories. Uh, our first story this week is an update to um, something we talked about, previewed last week on the show, and that was the Ghosts in the Air Glow transmissions organized and created by Amanda Dawn Christie, transmitted through the HARP transmitter site up in Alaska. Well, it happened. It was fascinating to listen to, even though some of us didn't hear the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, you uh, you missed out. Uh, uh, I, I I need to bang my head somewhere on the table because uh, yeah. <laughs> afterwards I was thinking, yeah, the tech guy. How about putting alarms on your phone when something's happening? <laughs> exactly. Anyways, for those of you that heard it or those that didn't as well, or maybe you've heard part of it, I was tuned in. I did hear the whole thing. It was really fascinating to listen to. And uh, Amanda has posted a message on her Facebook page about it. We thought we would share it with you. Uh, she says, thanks so much to everyone who tuned in. For those of you trying to watch the live stream, sadly, we had some technical problems there. Suddenly, my RSP2 didn't seem to be detecting anything, and the AirSpy HF Plus was getting excellent signals and audio, but we didn't realize that the audio wasn't streaming online until near the end of the piece. And neither of the SSTV images decoded on our end, partially due to some of the audio routing problems we were having. 
So while I'm disappointed that people who tried to catch the live stream didn't really get much, I have to say that I am thrilled overall. The feather and the lighting images worked. In less than a few hours, I've already had more than 40 reception reports from all over the world. And some of those reception reports have really beautiful audio quality of some of the sections we missed in our live stream. I'm going through the reports in the next few days to approve them and publish them in the repository. Overall, I think it went very well and was a success. I'm very, very happy with this piece indeed. But overall, uh, an extremely successful and really interesting project, uh, something we've not, uh, you wouldn't expect to find on, on, on shortwave radio. So coming up, we have a series of articles about uh, Maui um, and, uh, of course, all of the uh, emergency response that was happening there. And so we have a first a audio clip from NBC News where radio hosts in Maui take calls to keep the community informed. And we're going to listen to that right now. Please, please. People are desperate. Babies need diapers and formula. The elderly need their medication. All right. All right. Well, hang, hang on. Hang on for just a second, okay? All right. Veteran radio host Ed Kapoi of KISS 99 takes the call from Napili, north of Ka'anapali. It just kind of rocks you to your core. It really does. It's hard to take those kind of phone calls. We hear them crying, their tears, uh, their desperate pleas. Um, it, it's real. It's very real for me. In another studio at Pacific Media Group, the Hawaiian music hosts are doing the same for their audience. From Oluwalu again, mahalo Lori, uh, letting us know that you are there and there are families there waiting for some kind of uh, supply, uh, or any kind of food and supplies, yeah, and mahalo. we are working on that for you. The DJ's efforts have been made harder in this disaster, they say, by the lack of information from the administration of Mayor Richard Bisson, who's only been in office seven months and has rarely been available since the fires. It's been very frustrating try, trying to get people to talk, not to us specifically, but to talk through us to reach the people that really need to hear their voices. And when we don't have those details available to us for them, it's, it's frustrating for sure. I just wish we had more from them. We need our leader to step up and guide us on what to do. We have people out there waiting for any kind of contact. I'm doing, I come early in the morning and it's hard when we don't have any access to any information. I've called the mayor's wife and asked, is there any way he can talk with us? I haven't gotten a response back yet. You know, I was in Hurricane Aniki and I know what it's like to be without power, without food, without water and not have any information come your way. I go home and my sister looks at me like, are you okay? I'm like, I shouldn't be here. There's more that I can do. It's, uh, you could feel the emotions of everybody in that recording. It's incredible. And just shows you, once again, where do you turn when nothing works? Well, they turn to radio. Radio was there for them. And radio was there to get the emergency calls. And, and you know, hearing the, the, the panic, people calling in and, and really, you know, in need of emergency and in need of help. Yeah, for the announcers themselves, too, that they, you know, they were almost feeling helpless, like these people calling into them, like we're the only people these people have been able to reach. And, you know, the, we can't really do anything for them ourselves except to give them this opportunity to, you know, to talk to someone and to, to let, let people know what was happening to them. So, again, really the power of radio uh, being there at a time where it was really needed and really helpful for a lot of people. And, uh, of course, talking about the Maui fires, um, emergency response in Maui fires highlights radio's importance. And we just heard an example here. This is Byron Schacht in a letter to the editor of Radio World. And this letter to the editor, the author comments on radio's role in emergency management in relation to this article from uh, CBS about recent devastation in Maui. Interesting story from CBS News about the fires in Maui. If you read through it, nothing worked, sirens didn't work, cell phones were sketchy or not working at all, no electricity, etc., etc. If you read through the entire story, near the end is one line. Emergency management had to resort to radio 
to communicate with the victims of the fires. Well, well, interesting that what we have been saying all along is really true. The oldest form of contacting people is still the most reliable, and unfortunately, because people are so attached to their stupid phones, radio has to be resorted to. This little section of the article needs to get to these senators and congressmen who are on this AM in every car movement. Again, only brain dead people who don't believe in radio think cell phones are the answer to everything. I am overjoyed when cell phone networks crash and people realize they are not as good as they expected, even though once the cell phones are up again, radio will go back to being ignored. When we first started out here, the emergency manager had a drill of a fake tornado going through the middle of town. We have two of everything where I work in South Dakota. Towers, transmitters, generators, studios, microwave links. So we will stay on the air. Finally, people are indeed starting to realize that we are there when the cell service here has gone down. People have become way too reliant on cell phones. It's not the physical phones. It's the way they have taken over and brainwashed people into doing nothing else but spending 99% of their time with them. I have one. It's a plain old flip phone. It comes out of my pocket if someone calls me. Otherwise, just to charge it once or twice a week. If I need to call someone, I use a landline. They are so much more reliable and sound so much better. Mine used to give me severe weather alerts, but they were about 20 minutes after our AM station had them on the air, and usually after the severe event has passed. Ron Schacht, radio engineer, Redfield, South Dakota. This shows you that radio is very important, and it is true, actually, that uh, you know cell phones easily, easily go offline. Um, I'll say it again. We have a very quick event here of a little ice storm in April that uh, made my smartphone almost useless to get internet and and calls. So, uh, and that was a small event. So, imagine in a fire like in Maui. Forget it. Your smartphone isn't working. There's nothing else. It's unfortunate that I think we have come to a moment in time where people think that the technology we use is so reliable that it can never go down, when in reality, there's so many occasions where it can actually go down. Yeah. Um, it's, it's sad that it takes something as dramatic as this and as dangerous as this for for some people to realize it here's a, this is a gentleman uh, he was a radio engineer uh, so he knows and as he said in his letter you know they have two of everything because mm -hmm. things will go down and you need to be on the air you need to get messages out to people so um, i thought that was an excellent excellent letter and hopefully a lot of people read it and uh, and understand it and digest it all our last story relating to uh, the situation in Maui is um, coming from Radio Inc. And the headline is Hawaii Radio Joins Hands in Benefit Concert Broadcast. As Hawaii's radio stations continue to be the focal points of their communities in the aftermath of the deadly Maui wildfires, a benefit concert has been organized to be broadcast on those radio stations. Maui Ola. A benefit concert for Maui will be held on Sunday, August the 20th, so that's today, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Hawaiian time, which will be 0300 to 0700 UTC Monday. Uh, musicians and celebrities across the islands are coming together for the event with 100% of the proceeds to be directed towards Maui's United Way, Hawaii Community Foundation, Hawaii People's Fund, and the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. The Oahu event will be hosted uh, at the Bishop Museum with radio stations such as 92.3 KSSK, Island 98.5, Hawaiian 105, KINE, KCCN FM 100, KQMQ, HI 93 FM, KAPA Hawaiian FM, and more carrying the broadcast. Zachary Lum, co producer and executive director of Kalui Leo Lea, emphasized everyone has an important and worthy contribution in our collective effort to bring comfort to our families on Maui. 
In normal circumstances, the production and creative media industries are usually synonymous with entertainment. But in times of need, we have a very different contribution. We deliver urgent messages quickly and broadly. In the case of Mauiola, our message is support Maui, and we aim to deliver it worldwide. So uh, do check that out uh, later today, uh, 0300 to 0700 UTC. Uh, which is UTC Monday, actually. And uh, I guess there'll be various ways to access this. Uh, some of the stations streaming online probably is your best way. Or maybe you can even find an SDR somewhere that picks up those stations in Hawaii as well. And uh, check it out. And uh, I'm sure they'll be looking for support from literally around the world. So what's happening with our sun? Well, the sun is quieting down a little bit. Uh, the uh, sunspot groups, although a lot of them on the sun's surface, uh, there's a few solar flares that happen, but they're small C-class flares. So the quiet uh, conditions, and that could help actually. Um, you know, a sunspot number of 135 and a solar flux 150 still going to give us some really good propagation, especially in higher frequencies. And, you know, it could be uh, nice to have more quiet conditions uh, coming up this week for sure. So uh, hopefully you'll turn on the radio. But to uh, really know what's happening, you do need to turn on a radio and listen. This is Glenn Hauser. You're listening to the International Radio Report. 30 minutes of radio news and information every Sunday morning on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal and online at ckut.ca. So in our next story, uh, RTDNA reveals Radio's 2023 Edward R. Murrow Award winners. This is via the Radio Inc. The Radio Television Digital News Association has announced the national winners of the 2023 Edward R. Murrow Awards. This prestigious recognition honors over 100 outlets across radio, digital, and television journalism. This announcement follows the regional winners announced in May. The awardees will be celebrated at the Edward R. Murrow Awards Gala, scheduled for October 9th at the Gotham Hall in New York City. The 2023 Murrow Awards acknowledged remarkable journalism covering key events in 2022, including the reversal of the Roe v. Wade, the Uvalde public school shooting in Texas, the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, and other significant occurrences. Three organizations were honored with overall excellence awards for radio. Small Market Radio, WCHS Metro News Radio in Charleston, West Virginia. Large Market Radio, Texas Public Radio News, San Antonio, Texas. And the radio network, ABC News. In addition to the national winners, RTDNA also recognizes eight student organizations from seven universities with National Student Murrow Awards. The RTDNA Chair Tim Scheld said, the Edward R. Murrow Awards remind us that journalism is a powerful force for truth and accountability. These awards honor those who courageously navigate the complexities of our world to deliver stories that matter, stories that resonate, and stories that uphold the integrity of our profession. So congratulations to the winners. Uh, good journalism continues and that uh, these awards are there for that. And named after renowned broadcaster Edward yes. R. Murrow. So uh, they recognize him in naming the awards after him as well. Absolutely. Another story coming to us, this one from Ellie Karras of Radio World. AM FM radio is still the most listened to audio source in the United States. Edison Research just released its latest share of ear findings. Quarterly study determines what portion of our audio time is spent with different platforms. The analysis looks at all the audio usage across the United States among Americans aged 13 and older. The data is gathered uh, from a detailed one-day diary entry administered either online or via mail. Share of ear data has been continuously updated since 2014. Per Edison's findings this quarter, AM and FM, radio counting both over the air and streams 
accounted for 36% of all listening of Americans age 13 and older. Streaming music via platforms like Spotify, Pandora, and Apple Music, among others, accounted for 18% of all listening time. Using YouTube for music and or music videos accounted for 14% of all listening time, followed by podcasts, Sirius XM, and owned music. In other words, uh, CDs and other digital music files. Uh, bringing up the rear in terms of audio listenership are TV music channels and audiobooks, each with just 3% of all listening. So there were some changes of note since the first quarter. AM FM radio is down one point. Owned music dropped two points. Podcasts gained one point to another new all-time high of 10% of all listening, and audiobooks gained one point. When Edison completes the next two quarters of share of ear in 2023, it will have compiled 10 years of data. Audio has changed dramatically over the last 10 years, and we have captured the changes along the way, said Edison in its weekly Insights email. In 2014, when we started, just over half of Americans had a smartphone. Today, well over 90% do. When we began, far more people had radio sets in their homes or at their workplaces. And of course, no one had even heard of a smart speaker. So some things change, but some things don't. Yep. And, um, you know, it's, it's nice to see that AM FM radio is resisting the technology changes that we have. I mean, in the last 10 to 20 years, it's dramatic how we actually use devices that we have in our pockets that can do everything. We didn't have that 20 years ago. And uh, AM FM still up there. It's still listened to. And I think uh, it shows that... Um, you know, to all of those out there that think that radio's dead, maybe not so. I would like to see the breakdown, though, because they do say from age 13 upward. Um, yeah. You'd sort of see need to see more of an analysis broken down by age groups as well. And I'm sure there'd be some, you know, some, some swings in the numbers either way uh, based on the age groups. But uh, overall, it's uh, it looks pretty positive still for AM and FM radio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that if you take age into account, the part of F A M F M radio probably goes up with age. 13. More than likely, yeah. yeah. It's what you grew up with, basically, that you carry with you, I guess. Yeah. So in our next story, we have the Burkina Junta suspends popular radio station for criticizing Niger coup. This is via Vanguard News. Burkina Faso's junta-led government has suspended one of the country's most popular radio stations after it broadcast an interview deemed insulting to Niger's new military leaders. Radio Omega was immediately suspended on Thursday until further notice, the country's communications minister said in a statement. He said the measure was in the higher interest of the nation. The station, part of the Omega Media Group, owned by journalist and former foreign minister Alpha Barry, ceased broadcasting after the statement was issued late Thursday. The channel had run an interview with the spokesman of a newly established Nigerian group campaigning to return President Mohamed Bazoum to power. The country's elected leader was overthrown on July 26 by members of the Presidential Guard. Radio Omega on Friday said it would turn to every means of recourse to fight the suspension. The decision is a blatant violation of current laws and an unacceptable attack on freedom of expression and freedom of the press, it said. The other, it added, came after numerous death threats had been made against the radio station's managers and journalists from people describing themselves as supporters of the government. The Burkinabe authorities in recent months have suspended the French TV outlets LCI and France 24, as well as Radio France International, and expelled the correspondents of the French newspapers Libération and Le Monde. Once again, what do you do when radio, when media doesn't talk good about you? You shut them down. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a very dangerous situation going on in Africa right now. Neighboring countries that are looking at banding together and getting involved in Niger and I don't know, uh, the outcome may not be very good. Sort of a powder keg waiting to explode, I think. And uh, I'm not sure where it's all going to come to an end. Um, you know, we hear too many stories of this coming out of Africa, though so many countries that are just so unstable. And, uh, you know, just one little thing can spark it. This is a very uh, important situation and dangerous situation that we have to keep a watch on. Oh, definitely. There was a BBC news item that I'd heard um, a couple of weeks ago saying that it was already a very delicate balance in Africa. But the, to add Niger in this balance just changes everything. And, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen next. All right. Well, one thing we do have know that's going to happen next is a bunch of ham radio contests coming up. The first one, I'm a little surprised. I'm not actually sure this yeah. will actually go ahead, to be honest, but it's the Hawaii QSO party. Uh, 0400 August 26th to 0400 August the 28th. It's organized by the Hawaii QSO Party Group. Uh, it's supposed to be 110 through 160 meters, all modes, including digital modes. Now, we did receive word from a CIDX member who lives in Hawaii, fortunately not in Maui, but he did say that Amateur Radio has been very active with uh, emergency relief traffic and that sort of thing, health and welfare traffic. So um, I checked the webpage out. It looks like the event is still going on, but um, there may be some hams that will be actively involved in other activities because of uh, the situation there. Uh, next, we have the Alara Contest, 0600 Zulu to August 26th to 0559 Zulu, August 27th, organized by the Australian Ladies Amateur Radio Association. Ladies work everyone, men work only ladies. This is 160 through 10 meters, no work bands, phone, and CW. We have the uh, WVE Islands QSO party, 1200 Zulu, August 26th to 0300 Zulu, August 27th. That's organized by the U.S. Islands Awards Program. Uh, w and VE Island stations work everyone, and non-island stations work only the W and VE Island stations. It's 160 through 6 meters, phone, CW, and digital modes. We have the Worldwide DGDX Contest, 1200 Zulu, August 26th to 1200 Zulu, August 27th, organized by the Worldwide Radio Operators Foundation and the Slovenia Contest Club. Bands, six bands only, 1.8, 3.5, 7, 14, 21, and 28 megahertz. Modes, FT4 and FT8 only. The Romanian Amateur Radio Federation is organizing their DXHF contest at 1200 Zulu August 26th to 1200 Zulu August 27th. The bands are 80 through 10 meters, no work bands. That one will be SSB and CW. There's the Kansas QSO party, 1400 Zulu August 26th to 20 hours Zulu August 27th, organized by the Kansas QSO party group. 80 to 6 meters, um, no work bands, I would guess. SSB, CW, digital, and FM. The Ohio QSO party, 1600 Zulu, August 26th to 0400, August 27th, organized by the Mad River Radio Club. 160 through 10 meter bands, no work bands, phone, and CW. The CVADX Contest, SSB, 2100 hours Zulu, August 26th to 2100 hours Zulu, August 27th, organized by the Club de Radio Amadores da Escola de Comunicação, Brazil, bands 160 through 10 meters, and it's an SSB. Lots of activity on the ham bands next weekend. As for us, we have to check out. Uh, we are through for this week. Uh, 30 minutes has gone by quickly, as it always does. We thank you for tuning in to us. Uh, we'll be back again next Sunday here on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal with our next edition of the International Radio Report. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. Bye-bye.